Hello and welcome to the Art of Selling Online Courses. We are here to share winning strategies and secret hacks from top performers in the online course industry. My name is John Ainsworth and today's guest is Josip Bellina. Now Josip is our funnel strategy lead. He's worked on dozens of funnel building and optimization projects. He's developed and tested most of the systems that we use here at Data Driven Marketing when working with our clients. And today we're going to talk about automating marketing processes in your course business. So which email marketing software or other kind of software to use, how to avoid the most common mistakes that people make when setting up automation. Now, before we dive into today's episode, I want to share something incredibly valuable with you. If you're looking to boost your course revenue, you've got to check out our seven day roadmap to increase your revenue. It's the same system that we've used to help countless clients achieve predictable increases in revenue without making any more sales calls, running paid ads, competing on price, anything like that. You're going to learn in there how to increase your course revenue by 30%, how to identify and fix the missing parts of your funnels, and how to optimize your funnels for maximum performance. So if you're ready to take your revenue to the next level, go to datadrivenmarketing.co slash roadmap and download it. Josip, welcome to the show. Happy to be here. So talk to us, how can course creators use email marketing automation to increase course sales? What's any of the, the things yeah. that they should be doing? Yeah, so a few most important automations are a welcome series, potentially mm -hmm. a content drip campaign over a longer period of time. If you can set it up, abandoned cart emails and reminders, potentially upsells and cross sells. And then when people buy the course, consumption emails. Those would be the five key things uh, that you should have set up. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is, the opposite don't automate too much mm -hmm. it's Which interesting you know, right i was chatting with someone the other day about their i don't know who it was it was somebody I, oh yeah, yeah we were talking about a client that's right and they'd had like a seven month automated sequence and it wasn't making many sales and it was just like we replaced it with some live email promotions and it like the sales went up ma massively why why is that do you think why is that such a big deal you can't really know where your audience is um, at any given point in time over a period of like a year. You, I mean, you can, but it takes time. It takes years, it takes iterations, it, it takes very detailed KPI tracking, which is something that, you know, if you're a course creator, you have a team of a few people, you know, you're not running a big business with 50 or 100 people where, you know, there is a whole department dedicated to that tracking. If you're not doing that, then you're, you're just going to get lost. Mm -hmm. We've seen some people that had successful long-term automations, but generally for course creators, it's a, a pain in the ass to maintain mm -hmm. and almost impossible to track long-term. And it's interesting, right? Because when you do a promotion, you can look at the results of the promotion and see what results you got and then adjust based on that. But when you're doing a long-term automation, it doesn't quite work that way. Hmm. You know, like you, you could hypothetically come back in six months, review how well it's done and then adjust it from there. But I don't think that people really do. And it's just something about the speed of like, send the promotion, make a bunch of sales, you see what works, you do something else, you know. Yeah. Plus, we, we kind of do it that way when it comes to automating stuff for our done for you clients long term. So mm -hmm. we run a whole bunch of promotions. So let's say in a year's time, maybe a year and a half, we're going to run 30 plus promotions and we are going to know what works well. Now, if you do a promo A this month, the next month promo B might not be the ideal there. Maybe you need a promo D. So you figure out what works best when combined month after month or few weeks after a few weeks. And then you can use that to craft a perfect welcome journey for like the first two or three months. But even that is not bulletproof. So we preach automating first couple weeks, that's more than enough. Uh, welcome series, uh, indoctrination, if you will. And that's it. Then figure out what your audience wants, send them good quality content. Ideally, that's uh, something interesting for them in that particular moment of their life or even in the year, and then do email promotions as one offs. There is no real need to automate too much. Got it. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about where not to do it. So now let's talk about this, all the steps that you mentioned about where to do it. So 
What was the first one on the list? Was it welcome sequence? It was a welcome email sequence, yeah. All right, cool. So what should, how long should it be? What should be included in there? And how does that fit with the, uh, with the whole automation? Um, it shouldn't be too long, shouldn't be too short. But let's say we normally go for 10, 7 to 12, uh, 14 days. So mm -hmm. up to two weeks. Um, and we use a system that Kyle, one of our copywriters, more or less developed. He calls it uh, a perfect welcome email sequence, where we do seven or eight emails, depending on how you look at it. And it always starts the same. So the email number one is the lead magnet delivery email. So that's the first email that you are going to send. And it just does that. It delivers the lead magnet. Nothing more, nothing less, which is immediately followed by another welcome email that then talks about your, your business, your mission, your values. You introduce someone to the brand. Email number three, you want to show how you are different than the industry. You're definitely not going to talk bad about your uh, some of your competitors, but you're definitely going to show your good sides. Email number four then continues with uh, answering the big question. So what is your big question? Normally, your audience struggles with money, time, and something else. That something else is what you should show and allow people to understand that, you know, this is something that you have a problem with and this is something we can help with. Uh, if you have a proper customer avatar, if you have developed your customer avatar, that's a good starting point just to review what your audience wants to hear. Then we continue with showing people some of the results that we've had. Uh, we show the benefits of some of our products and then it can transition into an into a sales sequence after that. So either a couple emails with a going on campaign or a full on standard email promo that you've tested out and you know should work for that particular audience. Got it. Okay, cool. So that's the first step is they sign up for the lead magnet, they get the lead magnet, and then they get the welcome sequence that you've just laid out, and then they go into a sales sequence. Great. Okay, so that's one email marketing automation. What were the others that you mentioned? There is one before that in some cases. It sometimes okay. works, sometimes doesn't, so you can test that. So that's the tripwire automation email. Assuming mm -hmm. you have a tripwire, and assuming you know what that is, which is a, a relatively cheap product that you show to your audience that signed up immediately after they have opted in for your lead magnet. Uh, if they don't buy the tripwire, you can tag them. And if they haven't done anything with it for like half an hour, maybe an hour, you can start an automation uh, for 24 hours, let's say, where you will send one or two additional emails showing people that there is a chance for them to get that uh, lead, that tripwire offer. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we sometimes do, sometimes we don't. Uh, normally, if it converts or if it gets you more than 20 plus percent of the tripwire sales, it's good to have it. So you can track that. 20% of the tripwire sales. Oh, you mean as in if you got five sales from the front end tripwire funnel, if you get one additional sale from this? So right, uh, if you have 100 tripwire sales, uh, yep. in, let's say a month, 20 of those sales or more should be from that email automation. Mm -hmm. gotcha. uh, that's the benchmark we go for. Um, and yeah, that's basically the part of the welcome email sequence. You can also do consumption emails, which means that when someone buys your product, um, you want to acknowledge that, send them the receipt, obviously, and then give them sort of a roadmap or just nudge them every week once or twice so that they are on right track to actually completing the course because well if someone completes your course they're going to be a lot more likely to buy something from you again gotcha okay cool so we've got the tripwire email sequence email automation we've got the welcome sequence plus sell sequence and then we've got the consumption sequence what were the other ones that you mentioned um, we talked about content drip campaigns. Basically, if you know that there is a certain topic that's interesting to people, you can automate that and send them a, maybe a bi-weekly or a monthly email around a particular topic and automate that. Uh, similar to how you would create a newsletter email, if you will, and then kind of automate that. We rarely do that 
but it can help. Abandoned cart reminders are then the next thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so if your CRM or if your checkout software allows that, make sure to have cart abandonment. It should get 5% of sales retrieved or 5% of people that abandoned cart should be retrieved by that. It's a benchmark that we go for. But again, um, it's a lot more common with people in the e-com space than in info product space, even though it works quite well. Why is that, do you think? It just, it's just that people in, in info products aren't doing it or is it that it doesn't work as well as with e-com? Both. Um, it doesn't work as well as with e-com, probably because uh, people don't browse as much. So with e-com, you know, you will have a whole bunch of uh, products. You'll have a category page that will then branch out into different products. With courses, it's rarely like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, or at least it shouldn't be. I've seen yeah. people that have uh, courses selling them as they were pens, but you know, that's not optimal. Um, I think the biggest reason is technical inability. Not all software allows you to do that, mm -hmm. uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, for example, Teachable. Teachable's cart abandonment system is shit. <laughs> there is no other way of saying that. It's just not good. Plus, you need to code in an email, and it just looks weird. Uh, it almost doesn't work. I mean, it's obviously better to have it than not to have it, but it, the results are almost meaningless on a large scale. Um, so I think the, the biggest thing there is not many people have also two-step opt-ins and checkouts mm -hmm. where you would first enter your email and then check out, yeah. which is a good thing because with courses, it's better to have the checkout available immediately. It eliminates friction, so you mm. generally get more sales. Great. Okay, so that was abandoned cart. So are there any other automations people should have in place? Huh. I actually forgot one that could be used, which is okay. for generating testimonials. Uh, if someone enrolls in your course, uh, it's pretty good practice to follow up with them after a period of time when you expect them to have finished the course and ask them for a testimonial. You can automate that. Uh, we do it differently. We like to do testimonial campaigns where we hunt for testimonials once every six months, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do this as campaigns, but you can automate that. All right, cool. So let's say someone's on board, they want to set up all these automations. There's a bunch of different marketing automation tools. There's different bunch of different um, email marketing software. Can you share any tips on how a course creator can pick the right one without feeling too overwhelmed by the options? Should they be, is there one perfect one they should be leaving their current email marketing system for and swapping over to? No, they're all shit. But if you have to pick one, uh, go with the simplest one, probably. Uh, there is, I don't like CRMs and I love CRMs at the same time. Mm. So we preached active campaign for years and then convert it to simpler. Mm -hmm. But it's not the best for deliverability, but neither, there is not a single one that is perfect. So I'd say ConvertKit is the simplest one, even though it's a bit janky with all the, uh, with all of the tagging and automations that you have set up. But the tagging is a bit weird. But you know, it works for what we needed to. A lot of course creators that have millions of people on their email lists use it. So we, we, it's reasonably simple to use and learn. But if you know one, you know more or less all of them. Uh, HubSpot, HubSpot is probably the best one, but then again, most online course creators don't really need all of the functionalities that HubSpot provides. Yeah, it's super complicated to use HubSpot, it really is. Just as a CRM, it's fine, but you know, you don't need 80% of it. It has good analytics, so I like it for that, so that's mm. good. And you have active campaign that has amazing on-site tracking, but almost no one uses that functionality, or at least not well, with mm. scoring, which you can do with HubSpot as well. So, you know, Clavio is good, uh, but it synchronizes well with uh, Shopify. So it's mostly used by uh, e-com mm -hmm. uh, businesses rather than courses. We've used it with courses a couple of times. It's pretty good. I like it. And then you have others like Constant Contact, Mailgun, MailerLite, Drip. Uh, we've we've used 
thousand, not even a hundred. So if someone's, what's what I normally say to put someone, most people when they're thinking of changing systems is what you've got is probably fine. Don't spend the time changing to anything else because that's time that you could have been spent doing writing emails or writing sales pages, what have you. Would you agree with that? Or are there some tools where you're like, you should definitely leave this one and go to and then insert your favorite one? Uh, I don't like on Word, so I generally suggest switching from on Word. Yeah. But you are right. We never suggest our done for your clients or consultancy clients to change platforms, at least not yet. So there is a certain benchmark revenue wise, which is probably around a million a year or more, where it might make sense for you to start optimizing your tech stack. Mm -hmm. But before that, everything that you can do, whether it's MailChimp, whether it's Mailgun, Drip, ConvertKit, HubSpot, doesn't matter. It's going to work. It's more important to send the emails than to worry about which platform to send it for them from. Yeah. yeah, great. What about segmentation? Is that a useful thing to run in the automation in your email marketing software to personalize stuff to um, you know have different emails go out to different segments? Do you use that at all? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we normally segment people in three stages. So previous buyers, engaged audiences, and unengaged audiences. So or okay. we often refer to that as red, amber, green, even though that's not exactly that. So previous buyers are just that, people that have spent money with you. Ideally, you can tag them per product. That shouldn't be a problem. We like to combine that and have a list of people that bought from us. That should be your VIP list. They, those are your best customers. You can make by far the most money off of them long term. Then you have your engaged audience. Um, we look at an engaged audience as uh, people that have opened at least one email in the last 30 days. Now, if you talk to people that are now more involved in email metrics, uh, for example, email smart, if you were to talk to Adrian, from email smart about that, he'd tell you that you should actually consider people that have clicked more of some of your emails as the engaged audience due to all of the Google changes and Yahoo changes that were implemented a few months back. Mm. However, we still look at this as opens. It's mm -hmm. not a perfect metric, but it's a good enough metric. So people that opened the email over the last 30 days are engaged. There is a, a an amber list. So that's a green list. An amber list would be people that have opened an email uh, late uh, after 30 days or 60 days. So in between 30 and 60 days. So they haven't opened the email in the last 30 days, but they have in the last 60. You shouldn't really email them. It's unlikely that they will open. That can just harm your email deliverability overall. And then red list is everyone else, people that are just not opening your emails. We suggest doing re-engagement campaigns there. There is a YouTube video on our channel, uh, how to run effective re-engagement. Um, I think Martina did that. And yeah, I highly recommend watching that if you're interested in re-engagement. And should course creators be personalizing their email campaigns using any of these automation tools so it kind of resonates more with their audience? Is that worthwhile? Uh, yes and no, again, depends on where you are with your business. So if it's a well-established business, you are making millions and everything is running smoothly. Uh, yes, uh, thinking about automation would probably be a good thing. However, for most, I would say 99% of people listening to this, uh, personalizing it more than just using a hello first name with a fallback there is more or less not needed. Okay. So most people just don't use that shouldn't be using the personalization. It's too complicated. There's not enough benefits from it. Yep. Cool. Okay. So what about when launching a new course or program? Can email marketing automation be integrated to the marketing strategy there to maximize enrollment and engagement? Mm, not sure about enrollment. Well, depends on how you launch it. If you're launching it following something like Jeff Walker's product launch formula, uh, definitely having some sort of automation for people that have, you know, enrolled in or have shown interest in a product is 
a good strategy because you want to stay on top of people's minds. Um, but that's like a, a consumption email sequence, more or less. Um, it's it's more important uh, it's more important to do good launches and focus on what's currently happening than to focus on uh, email automations and at this stage um, at least not a lot of focus. I think the most essential automation workflows are, as we said, welcome series, cart abandonment, maybe a post-purchase workflow workflows definitely and. That's more or less it. Gotcha. All right, cool. So most automation is overkill for most people listening to this. They should be doing the ones you mentioned, like maybe the tripwire funnel emails, the welcome sequence. If it's a two-step checkout, which it probably shouldn't be, then uh, um, cart abandonment emails, consumption emails, and I think there was one more as well, wasn't there? Uh, yes, we initially talked about uh, content drip campaigns. Oh, content drip campaigns as well. Okay, cool. So those are the ones that are worth doing. Most of the rest of it isn't really necessary. People can use whatever email marketing software they're already using. Almost definitely don't even worry about it. Um, don't worry about personalization. Segmentation, yes, but only into who's bought, who's engaged, and who's not engaged, and then different kind of... Uh, emails for them either they get the emails or they don't get the emails or they get the VIP ones and that sounds like it's about it so relatively straightforward hopefully for everybody listening in terms of knowing what it is they're supposed to do now Josip thank you very much for that really appreciate your time coming on and, and uh, sharing your wisdom with everybody mm, of course anytime if you found the interview useful and you want to get future episodes subscribe wherever it is that you listen to this and if you want to know about what you can be doing that isn't automation, but it's about actually sending out your email promotions every month, which is the crucial thing, like the most important thing you can be doing. And you want to get on the, the wait list or learn more about like the new workshops that we're running around that, it's datadrivenmarketing.co slash promotion. And if you go to that link, you're going to sign up to our wait list and we'll send you through information as and when it becomes available about those workshops. The first uh, batch of those are probably going to be sold out very quickly but future ones you'll be able to get on to so those have been having amazing results people have been having their best months ever maybe i think one client had the best month apart from black friday um apart from his black couple of black fridays otherwise it was his best month ever and it makes it super easy to write those emails in your style without feeling salesy write them really quickly get it done and then make those sales so if you want to know more about that go to datadrivenmarketing.co slash promotion thanks so much as always for listening to the show and we will see you next time